it's been dubbed climate gate the controversy over hundreds of emails leaked from a top global warming data hub critics say the emails expose fraud behind the alarmist global warming data and raise serious questions about the integrity of the scientists involved in the research our next guest says these emails are just the tip of the fraud iceberg here's steve malloy he's the founder and publisher of junkscience.com and author of look at that title green hell <laughs> All right, Steve, what's going on here? As I understand it, somehow, somewhere, somebody leaked emails between these various environmentalist scientific types in which things like the word trick were used. Phrases, phrases like, we're not even close to understanding the science right. were used. Things like, uh, you better destroy incriminating documents before someone finds them were used. What's happening? Well, these emails uh, promote us from skeptics to the vindicated. You're absolutely right. They expose for people who have always had questions about climate science that there's just a lot of fraud going on. These people have lied about the uh, temperature increases. Temperatures are actually on the, on the decline. They have tried to silence their critics. They have destroyed data. Uh, this is all against the scientific code. There needs to be an investigation. Uh, Congress needs to get on top of this. Penn State University, which is the home for one of the scientists, Michael Mann, the inventor of the hockey stick, they need to launch an independent investigation. We need to get at the bottom of this. I think these emails are really just, as you said, the tip of the iceberg. If we were to get all their emails, we would see how they've constructed global warming alarmism out of whole cloth. All right, well, they have been scaring the daylights out of us. Uh, for the past, I, I don't know how many years. I mean, Al Gore won some kind of an international prize over this and became a very, went from a poor politician to a very, very wealthy, there he is in his younger days, a uh, businessman. Uh, right. did, didn't they know that they were duping us? And shouldn't they have known that somehow these emails and this fraud would come to light? Well, I don't think they ever thought that their emails would be released like they were. Now, it's important to know that these emails were not hacked. They were not stolen. They were put together in response to a Freedom of Information Act request and accidentally or purposely stored on a public server so the public had access to them. Right, you, say no, Freedom of Information Act, you say Freedom of Information Act uh, request. Does that mean that these were in the possession of the government? Did the government know about this fraud? <laughs> Well, the, the Obama administration is closely intertwined in the fraud. You know, Barack Obama's top science advisor, John Holdren, is, is part of the emails, and yesterday in Congress, he was covering his, his trail. These emails came out of the U.K. and were subject to uh, the U.K.'s Freedom of Information Act, which is different than ours. Uh, but nonetheless, they do expose, in, in very candid conversation, how global warming alarmism has just been made up. Um, in one particular email, uh, Michael Mann from Penn State talks about how they're hiding the cooling that has been go going on for the last 10 years. He, 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 mentioned, he uses the term hide the decline. There's another email where Kevin Trenberth, who is a IPCC muckety-muck, uh, admits that they don't understand energy flows in the atmosphere. Well, if they don't understand energy flows in the atmosphere, you can't model them. You can't predict gloom and doom like the IPCC does. Steve Malloy, it's a scary story. Please stay on it. I know Glenn wants you to follow it, uh, and we'll follow it with you. I will. With you. Thanks for joining us. I will.